it's John back again, and today I'm going to take a look at one of the DVD battle packs of the G.I. Joe 25th anniversary figures. Um, this is set number two of five. I believe I'm missing one of them, of course, which was number five, which is the hardest one to get your hands on. Uh, yeah, but uh, this covers a bit of the figures that tie into the Revenge of Cobra. And you see you got Roadblock. Lady J, the amazing Weather Dominator, and Destro. Uh, I can remember when I was a kid back in the 80s sitting on my aunt's couch because she was one of the first people in the neighborhood to have cable on a Saturday eating a bowl of cereal when I happened to come across the cartoon series The Revenge of Cobra. They ran all the episodes at one time and I re played that adventure and recreated it over and over again, finding pieces of stuff of gears and bits I could put together to blow up all over the world so that they had to fight for them to try to recombine them again. And so this is what we get. And you get the figures that we have here. You also get the DVD inside. And it's actually still today a really fun episode. Or episodes. I think it's four all together that make it up. And then... You also have a build a piece that come came with these sets, so you can build one of the other crazy inventions that they came up with, uh, the mass device, which I'm missing, of course, the crystal piece, I think. And on the back, you get to see the chunk of the mass device that it comes with, and some shots from the animated show. Yeah, your Lady J your Destro, your Roadblock, and then a little blurb about one of the other battle packs that you can pick up, and a completed look at the mass device, and all the pieces that you need to build it, and a little blurb over here about the cartoon. <clears throat> so, yeah, these, uh, 2008 seems to be the last couple episode themes. Uh, they had some really good stuff coming out in 2008. Uh... Originally was 19.99 by the sticker on the top. I probably picked this up back then, and it went into a closet when I sold off a large part of my collection before. Um, when we first moved, me and my wife first moved to, in together in our second apartment. I think is when I sold off a bunch of stuff, but I did keep a few pieces that I had, and I did keep these. <clears throat> so I think it's about time to open it up, and uh, give me a second, and I will, and we'll get back to it. This battle pack, number two, comes with a whole lot of stuff. Of course, you get the uh, DVD here, which has the episode The Revenge of Cobra on it. And your three figures, your components to build the Weather Dominator comes with instructions to build the mass device. The mass device piece, we'll take a look at it in a little bit. And some figure stands. And of course your profile cards. You've got roadblock here which it looks like it's the original artwork. Maybe the face has been updated a little bit. Heavy machine gunner roadblock. Got Lady J, which that looks like it's completely new artwork to me. And uh, Destro, which looks like it's pretty much the original, maybe changed just a little bit. Um, I think pretty much this was the relaunch of the G.I. Joes in the modern era when this was going, when these were first coming out. And as of now, it's just finally starting to wind down again, and I think we're getting close to the end. There's so many, so many amazing things out there that you can't collect or get all of them all the time. Uh, I'm going to look first at this accessory piece here. In the episode, there is a moment where... Um, Roadblock falls into a pit, and Destro has created creeper vines, and uh, with the use of the weather dominator, he makes it rain, and these vines grow and 
Roblox gets trapped and attacked by them. So it's kind of a neat little piece. It looks like something that would belong in an aquarium. But it does almost look like you can take it onto his stand. Maybe, maybe not. Be cool if the pegs did fit through, though. No, well, they kind of do. It looks like they were meant to. And you can tie your roadblock up. We'll get to that. Let's take a bit of a closer look here at roadblock. Come on, zoom in on roadblock. There he is. He's got his little mustache and. His little chin hair there, his eyebrows, his bald head, his one kind of lazy eye. He's got a extra loose piece of plastic here as his um, vest. He's got some orange pants on. He's got a giant pocket. He's got his hands, and he comes with a knife to help cut away at the vines. And these figures upgraded the articulation that the modern or vintage Joe's had so his head's on a bald joint or more just on a swivel he can't really look up or down or anything got hinge and ball joint his shoulders which the shoulders are really bulky looking and this one is not going to move right now but they can hinge out let's see if this one will that one works and they go all the way around. They have a hinge and swivel at the elbow. And they have a swivel at the wrist right there. And then you can see he has a diaphragm joint. That gives him a little bit of movement there. And no waist movement at all. Legs go out pretty good. Kick forward very well kick back pretty good no upper leg swivel they've got at least right at this point single bend at the knee and a swivel and hinged foot and I believe they all have oh nope Lady J looks like she might have double knees so here's our roadblock his camo and everything he's a pretty good looking figure his arms are weird I think they may have corrected some of these things on the 50th anniversary release of these guys. Uh, let's see if we can kind of just have Roadblock hanging out. Getting attacked by his vines. And we got a fan favorite character of course is Lady J. And she has a much better looking frame. I think her shoulders look a lot better She's got some pretty good movement on her head. Get more angles with that. Uh, let's see. Yep, she's got the same articulation on her arms, swivels and bends. No wrist swivel on her, though. Does have the diaphragm joint. No waist. And she does have double jointed knees. So they were different builds, even in the same set. Um, well, one cool thing about her is she comes with uh, different spears and different spear heads. Like, these can come out. You've got different grenades and rockets, and I think that's a cool touch. And she hems with a gun and her sidearm here that is removable and probably extremely easy to lose. Just have uh, some little bit of rankings and shields and buckles and a little knife on the legs, a little extra hand gun that's molded. And she has her figure stand. Oh, if she wants to do peg in. Let's see. Get your hand in. There it is. We got a Lady J. And then one of my favorite Cobra bad guys, Destro. Um, I was always a fan of Cobra more than G.I. Joe growing up, so I think they spent a lot more time winning than the Joe team did, just because their you know, the characters were 
a lot cooler. Um, Destro has his chrome plated head, which is awesome. Uh, his collar, it looks kind of, it's kind of weird the way they did it because it's his exposed chest around this collar, but when you turn it this side, you can see that the collar sticks out farther than his body. So it doesn't make sense that that is his chest right there. It's a little weird. It's a strange um, choice that they made. He's got his rockets on his wrists, grenades on this one, so he's all heavily armored. He's got pretty much the same articulation and build as Roadblock. He does not have the double jointed knees. He does have a sidearm with another teeny tiny gun that's probably very easily eaten by the carpet. And he's in a black jumpsuit with gray boots. So, I dig the chrome head. It does not seem to have any movement though. That chest piece is really weird. I know there is um, a f the 50th anniversary version of Destro that came out. It is fantastic and I'd love to get it. It looks like it may be one of the best Destros ever created. Um, these were very early in the new modern figures, so they have been updated and changed and improved on since this set came out. Uh, but one of the coolest things is, of course, the Weather Dominator. There is the control panel for it. You can have your figures hold it. There's all sorts of like little button controls, and it swivels, and it comes with this little base it sits on, and then all the pieces from the show that would explode off that had to get picked up. Um, was this the one that was... <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I haven't watched it in a long time. I think this is the one that was in the temple that they had to go get. No, this was in the temple. This was up in the ice. Where was this one at? I don't remember. That's so bad. Was this the one that was in the jungle? But they all pieced together just like they would if you could get it all in once you collect all, all collected all your pieces from your battle and they go all back together and then you have a full scale weather dominator and uh, it's pretty cool this is something I really wish I would have had when I was a kid I was a huge G.I. Joe fan it was probably my biggest toy collecting that I did as a kid and then it also has your, uh, is this the generator piece? Yep, for the mass device. I got a couple figure pegs here, and it's got some nice detailing on it. But if you do all the rest of the battle sets, you get the rest of the pieces. You can build this, and then the came with what it looks like is an app advertisement. I'm going to come over here for a second, see if I can fold this thing out. So this reminds me of the little inserts that way they do back in the 80s. It's really dark, so it's probably not going to come up too well, but there's a little battle scene going on with the stuff you can get. But on the back side, like they used to do back in the day, show off what it is you could get if you bought all the pieces that they were selling. You get the Armadillo tank and a Serpentor's air chariot. Um, a modern Cobra Hiss tank, which was always, of course, one of my favorite um, vehicles growing up as a kid. A flight pod and ram cycle, a vamp. Got a few extra figures that you could get, like Wild Bill, Snake Eyes, Duke, Hawk, Cobra Commander, of course, Cobra Viper, Cobra Bats, Python Officers, 12 inch GI Joes. Uh, shows off the other battle packs you can get. You can get the Mass Device episode, Revenge of Cobra episode, and then they had, of course, the two-pack comics with uh, Red Star Duke and Shipwreck and Copperhead. And I think I had almost all of these things, and they were still all in their packages, and when we moved, I sold most all of them off, which now I wish I still had them. To add to my toy room. Well, who knows, maybe I'll end up picking them up again, or at least loose some of the pieces. Um, but 
But that's a fun relaunch of one of my favorite toy lines as a kid, and they did a good job of keeping it going even up through till today. And G.I. Joe still is a fun line to play with and collect. So hopefully, who knows what the future will bring for G.I. Joe. Um, but that's all, pretty much all I got on this. I may pass that DVD on to a young friend of mine who may enjoy the cartoon since I already have the entire set. And, um, yeah, these are cool. Um, I really wish the fifth box wasn't so hard to find so I could finish the mess device, but it is what it is. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you around. Oh, I do have a question for those of you that do have been collecting the modern G.I. Joes. What do you think is your favorite version of Zartan? Because Zartan's my absolute favorite figure probably in the entire G.I. Joe run, and I'm looking to get the best version of the modern one. Um, so let me know down below which is the best. Is it? I don't even know if they did a 50th anniversary version of Zartan or not. Um, of course, I don't think anything can ever compare with the original because the whole color changing plastic. I don't think they ever redid that. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll kind of quit rambling on here and I'll see you around. Bye. Thank you.